just to kind of start things off, man, like, you've obviously been in all these different projects that, like, touch different genres and sounds. Is that something that you've wanted to do, something that comes naturally to you, or something that just kind of happened out of nowhere? Well, I, I think it kind of uh, just happened organically, and I realized that uh, while you know playing a, a certain genre of music um, and listening to almost the opposite of that genre, it kind of helps either side uh, of of the music um, for me, anyways. I like uh, you know um listening to something old to find something new you know what i mean like um you know tons of people do that shit like tame impala or whatever you know that fool sounds like paul mccartney you know what i mean so um, actually kurt i'd agree uh, like you could listen to rap and then like jam out with your bros on a heavy metal track like you know you got absolutely. a taste of the other genre and then, and then you're like oh yeah let's go hard in this yeah. other one you know yeah, yeah. So I think listening to all types of music kind of help you. Uh, and I found myself uh, playing in uh, the screamo scene, the you know the post hardcore scene, um, and I would listen to like you know M83 and like Cigarettes and you know Bjork and just kind of very portis head like shit like that like you know kind of lo-fi trip-hop shit you know um and, and y y melodies everywhere so you know I, I i've ripped off melodies not intentionally but i've totally like you know what i mean just kind of used the same flow uh uh and I don't remember where I I, rem I remember it from. And then sometimes I kind of go, oh shit, yeah, that's totally from. <laughs> oh, I totally uh, feel that. Yeah, way. and that and uh, I mean yes. that happens <laughs> obviously because I don't know. Basically, all guitar chord progressions and melodies have been used. Like yeah, they're yeah. Just, like, yeah. So it's kind of trying to create your own spin with that. And and like you said, you know, you're um. Like, you're more into bands outside of, like, the whole post-hardcore genre. I know that you've uh, cited Mac DeMarco as one of, uh, like, the artists that you're into. So how did you happen to kind of stumble into this scene of post-hardcore? Was it just something that, like, your friends, like, whether it's the guys in 5-Minute Ride were playing at the time? And, like, did you have a band that was kind of a gateway into the scene as well? Totally. So um, Sacramento has always had, in my opinion, uh, a pretty damn good scene for uh, for the, the the size that it is. Um, of course, we would always drive to the city in San Francisco to see like a, a bigger band like at, mm -hmm. you know, the American Music Hall or something like that. Slims um, and all that stuff. Yeah. Warfield. But I, I I don't know, man. I, I feel like Sacramento had the emo, like goth, uh, mod, you know, scene way before a, a lot of other places. Um, I, I you know I feel like the hipster and the elitist happened in Sacramento before <laughs> anywhere. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's how I feel. <laughs> I fucking grew up there. I'm sure I'm sure Anthony Green feels the same way about Philadelphia or some shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like yeah, you know, Brooklyn, right? <laughs> or yeah, or whatever. Yeah. Uh, but um, fucking I, I I don't know. I I think that the reason I gravitated towards post hardcore is because in high school, um, the people that I was playing music with, that's that's what we wanted to sound like. We wanted to sound like Hope's Fall or like we want, you know, uh, I don't know, just just something brutal, but also melodic and like, you know, 
just fucking emo man like yeah. it, you know, like you'd, you'd listen to like poison the well and shit you know what i mean and, oh and, oh my god yeah poison the well and hope's fall are two bands that like oh, don't get dude. talked about enough trust kill was like on my radar so hard ferret records was super hard on my radar like a uh you know that band vox v-a-u-x yeah and yeah. dude it, all these bands used to play at the boardwalk in sacramento like 15 minutes away from where i used to live 20 minutes away you know um still it's a fucking dive bar, but uh, yeah. it's they have a, that infamous sound guy. <laughs> yeah, Claude. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and it was so funny back in the day because my band from Sacramento used to play at the boardwalk, and we would sell it out. We could sell it out two nights in a row if we wanted to. It was ridiculous. Um, and Claude, when I'd walk in the door, he'd always go. It's the golden boy, everybody. The golden boy. Oh. <laughs> golden, golden voice. Like, fuck you, Claude. Like, put me on the spot. <laughs> I'm like 19, 20, you know, years old in Five Minute Ride. Um, and so, yeah, Five Minute Ride used to play with um, Farewell Unknown, which was Will Swan's band before Dance Gavin Dance. Um, and so this was our scene. Uh, we, we played the boardwalk, we played, uh, the Capitol garage, which is another place downtown that kind of had more, uh, indie rock, if you will, or math rock. Um, because well, right, Sacramento right. <laughs> had a huge scene of, of math rock and, uh, and indie rock. And so the indie rockers would play at the Capitol garage. And the, you know, the fucking, you know, My Chemical Romance bands would play at the boardwalk, you know? Yeah, so uh, Indie Rockers, did you ever listen to that band in Engle? They were from Sacramento. They were on drive through for yes. a short time. Yeah. So I, they must have been kind of active know, around the same time that you guys were. I know Crazy Chris. I I run into him every, every now and then. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's, that's awesome. Yeah. I don't even know if people know that he's known as Crazy Chris. I didn't know that. <laughs> Him and another kid named Mason Lindahl um, were like, you know, some of the really good folk, you know, bands that came out of Sacramento. Devandra Banhart used to just be homeless in Sacramento. Wow. Really? Yeah. Chris oh, yeah. Rose, like, like, that was a very... uh. Influen like influential album for me that really like opened like the floodgates for like indie folk music. Dude, Devandra Banhart, they they had to go find him to sign him. Wow. He didn't, he didn't have a phone. Like he he was just a fucking he was really living it. You know? Probably lived in Slab City for a while too, probably. You know what I mean? Like, you know, just wandering wandering yeah. and 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 you know that's why his songs were so good back then because he was just a he was like the real deal like not in it you know for the money or the vanity yeah dude and then you know he got discovered and it, it kind of ruined it <laughs> yeah yeah for sure <laughs> like, modest mouse, like modest mouse you know probably one of my all-time favorite bands but uh, you know, I don't know anything after their their uh, their breakout record. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, Hold yeah, on. for sure. It's a different band. <laughs> yep. Yeah. You could say the same thing about like yeah. even Death Cab for Cutie. You know, like like that was sure. a band that I was super into, and then they like blew up and totally changed. Um. So so back to you. Was there like a a band in that Sacramento scene before you started Five Minute Ride that? you kind of thought was influential that maybe like i don't know maybe like they were a little bit known but didn't get talked about enough fuck dude um i know it's like kind of a long time so ago many. right there's so many that influenced me but i wouldn't say it would be like 
it, it wouldn't always be uh like a like a a post hardcore band. It, yeah, yeah, it doesn't know. have to be. Um I used to go to the Placerville Coffee House, um, which is shut down now, sadly. Um, Rip. But I used to go watch bands there, and uh, there was a band called Ent, E N T. Okay. Sure. And they were they're an instrumental math rock band, and they were incredible. And uh, they would play with another band. Uh, from Sacramento called Hella. Hella. And Hella is uh, the drummer. Is it, it Hella is a two piece band. And the. Yeah, the, I think the, I've heard of them before. The guitar player did a bunch of music, like a ton of music. Uh, the drummer, his name is Zach Hill. He. he I think he recorded like a hundred albums in a year. Like the dude's crazy. (laughs) But have you ever heard of Death Grips? Of course, yeah. So that's great. That's Zach Hill. Oh wow. Uh, He's not the uh, uh, the singer. He's not the uh, the vocalist. But he's more. He. I mean. If you see Death Grips play, there's a a singer and a drummer. Yeah, who kind of does a production as well, or? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. There's three guys I think that do it. Okay. That do Death Grips, because there's another guy that does a lot of sound manipulation too. Mhm. Um, but dude, Zach Hill has played with everybody. Uh, the the drummer for Death Grips. He, yeah. He's literally. I mean, he started a band with <clears throat> Omar Rodriguez Lopez and and Cedric from fucking Mars Volta at the drive-in. Mm-hmm. El, it's called El Grupo Nuevo, like Omar Rodriguez Lopez or something Dang. like that. And the, those guys the also had a band with Travis <laughs> Barker, so it seems like they kind of stick together and, and just, uh, all right, which drummer are we getting for this, for this group type of deal? <laughs> Yeah, I think Zach even opened up for like the Red Hot Chili Peppers at one point. Whoa, uh, it's it's crazy. His his uh his his fucking shit is nuts. Um, Very and thick, uh... is such a crazy fuck you band, you know? Like they they like exposed this email that was confidential between them and Epic Records, and then they leaked their album on purpose Mm -hmm. and (laughs) did all this like anti shit, which is cool. I mean, just fucking punk rock. rock. Yeah. I, I always have like a great amount of respect for bands that kind of do that. Like, I mean, obviously it's like a story that's been told a lot where like a good underground band in the scene signs to like a major and they just kind of get swept under the rug because they're not, you know, they don't sound like Fall Out Boy. They don't sound like My Chemical Romance type of thing. And that's yeah. kind of what they expected. Um, But to kind of fast forward about you, like, how did you end up joining Dance, Gavin Dance? Obviously, like you said, you played with uh, Farewell Unknown. And I guess my main yeah. question is, did you have to um audition by singing Uneasy Hearts? Because... I know that somebody from another band, uh, uh, you know, kind of did that. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> it's kind of a <laughs> story, I guess. Thinking back on it. it Which it your was... version was a hundred times better. I'll, I'll just say. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, so here's the story. Uh, I got the call from my manager who used to manage Dance Gavin Dance. He he managed both of us. Uh, so it was kind of a manager thing. Um, when they kicked Johnny out for the first time, uh, I uh, got to audition for them, yes. And they wanted me to sing Time's New Roman, Lemon Meringue Tie, and... 
Ant Lion, I think. Ooh. And maybe Backwards Pumpkin. So I tried out for them, and I had to sing all those songs. Um, those are tough ones too, man. <laughs> and Especially I, Ant Lion. Yeah, <laughs> that was actually the one I could I could pull off better than the other ones. Okay, cool. Uh, okay. <laughs> I'm just thinking of those high notes or those those belts, you know. I know. You know, <laughs> Johnny. I know. I fucking know. It, it was <laughs> I I was smoking cigs at the time and I had quit. I quit because I was like, fuck, I can't sing these songs uh, if I if I don't quit. And uh, so yeah, yeah, I I sang those songs and I guess I impressed them enough. Uh, at practice um and i think it was a lot more of like me and matt mingus were were cool like we would hang out together before and then i don't know we would just like party and shit together and so uh, aren't you both into skateboarding kind of deal what like i think uh matt mentioned being into skateboarding and oh yeah yeah, it's like, aren't y'all both kind of... Yeah, we we have a lot of things in common, me and Matt. Shoot, uh, he He's from Elk Grove. I'm from Citrus Heights. It's like both two suburbs uh, around Sacramento. And um, yeah, like he was in maybe another band at the time. I think he was also in Farewell Unknown. Yeah, yeah. And Matt's just a fun guy to, to hang out with. He, he really is. But I think that played a factor because I remember them saying that um, Kellen's voice was too feminine. Like, they wanted, they <laughs> wanted like, the Johnny grit. Yeah. They wanted somebody that could kind of have that rawr. <laughs> I, 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 guess. I get that. I get that, for sure. Um, and his voice was, like, too clean. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. 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 So, so yeah, they you passed got, on. You got Kellen. the grit, man. It, yeah. it was between me and him, and they 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 chose me. It was I was pretty stoked about it. Um, I was stoked, and then I was immediately like, oh fuck, like the internet is tearing me apart right now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there, there. I mean scene girls would literally do like there was this girl that was like i remember she had like the raccoon hair and shit it was awesome. oh, <laughs> yeah i remember that one. <laughs> she was she literally just like uploaded a youtube just to diss me like yo i don't know who this kurt guy is but like I'm just not feeling it. Like Johnny Craig's like the best singer ever. You know what I mean? Like, okay, bye. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. and that's wow, she was kind of ahead of her time to do that because like people weren't really <laughs> doing that shit like back then. Not not like so, that. Got, for, really? That sounds normal to me. I've had yeah. my share uh, <laughs> of scrutiny. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. But I I feel like yeah because I've heard you mention that before on on a. Shane uh, Told's podcast, but it almost seems like like things have changed, right? Like, I, like there's definitely a lot of people that kind of like hold those two albums with you on it in like such a high regard. So that does that kind of feel weird? That like, hey, where were y'all when I was actually in the band? Nah, man, <laughs> I, I I I chalk it up as a blessing and just an honor that that people. Um, that people uh, appreciate uh, my heart, honestly, yeah. because that's that is, you know, it, it it stood the test of time. Like you can you can be the best singer in the entire world, but um, if you're not talking about uh, I don't know real things, genuine things, like there was genuine hurt and genuine uh, love and just complete despair and depression you know on on those on those albums and people relate to them and so i think you know the experiment you know the results are in basically you know yeah for sure yo 
my dude. Yeah, you are right, man. Uh, actually, yeah. So, you know, you're filling in for Johnny Craig. You know, you, you get a, in general, you're filling in for a band that used to have a vocalist and people are expecting things. Yeah. But, uh, you know, yeah. You, you do have the support. and But so after that, you know, you go in to record, you know, your first album with this band. How was recording, a, you know, Death Star, as the fans call it? <laughs> like and, what know, was the that. vibe um i guess kind of like where were you like mentally or is there like a fond story that you remember either yeah, about yeah. like writing the record or, or recording it well uh it, it, i love recording with chris crummett chris crummett is incredible um i'm going up there uh <laughs> november 1st to uh, finish up, you know, some things. Uh, he's just been an incredible, uh, engineer in the whole dance Gavin dance success equation. Um, and, uh, so really it's, it, there was a lot of pressure on me because yes, you know, Johnny Craig, uh, has a new band and it's called Emerosa and everybody loves Emerosa, you know, what's Dance Gavin Dance doing? And we really, uh, I, I felt like we knocked it out of the park on it and we got a lot of good features, which features can be like good or bad, you know what I mean? But, uh, I really, really think that the features that happened on that album were very special and just like I'll remember it forever. I'll remember those days forever. Just recording. And um what else is really cool is Rise Records uh is in Portland uh as well as Chris Crummett. Mm -hmm. And so Craig uh you know was doing a lot of schmoozing with us back then, which was cool. Like he'd be like, Oh, come to my house and you know I've got all these, like, you know, platters to eat and shit, and, like... Wow. <laughs> weed, weed, weed wasn't legal back then, but he had, like, a shit ton of it, and... <laughs> Good pass. I remember he would just, like, smoke us out until, like, he, he would just be like, all right, is anybody high? <laughs> <laughs> and we'd be like, yeah, <laughs> we're really high. <laughs> Okay, cool. Let's go downstairs. You know, it was fun. It was fun times. Um, you know, it was a crazy time in my life, my 20s, you know? Yeah, I'm, I'm sure you guys were, like, more than stoked uh, to get Chino Moreno on a song. Like, you know, him being, like, the Sacramento legend, like, Def, you know, Deftones as a whole. Like, when I, when I hear Sacramento bands, like, obviously, they were kind of, like, the first one that that really said there's something going on here. Yeah, and I should have mentioned uh, Deftones when we started because... That's Deftones, a given, though, right? That's <laughs> like, just, like, everything. I yeah. mean, I, I like I grew up in Sacramento. Deftones was, was the band. That's why we were on top of this, like, screamo, metalcore, post-hardcore scene because of bands like Deftones. If mm -hmm. and and we knew about them first. I was listening yeah. to uh Around the Fur My Own Summer when I was in fucking middle school. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? So it started everything. So, yeah, to have Chino on a song with me and like it's just there forever and I Mortal. got I got <laughs> to work. I got to work with him. Um he dug the things that I was bringing to the table um so much that in fact this is some crazy shit um chino invited me to be a part of a deftones record um oh, and it was through a uh his homie named sean carano sean carano runs uh royal division management mm -hmm. so that's like i think that's like polyphia Maybe even Sean. Uh, okay. I think maybe Yvette Young or Covet or whatever. He's got a lot of good. I, I I'm probably butchering it, but those are the bands that I know that I think he works with. Uh, but anyway, Sean Carano hooked that up for me, 
and uh, he's a longtime homie. I haven't talked to him in years, but uh, he hooked that up for me, and I, I – I recorded some shit with Chino. I like went to their recording studio and I met Terry Date, their their engineer that yeah. had that did like every single amazing record that they that they have. Uh, and yeah, it was crazy, crazy. Wow, I, what I'm trying to think of like what record was that? Was that like the self titled or Saturday Night Rift? Um, or was it, it was, like the forgotten one, like the one that yeah. they never released? Because of so cheese. It, was the one, it was the one they never released, unfortunately. Uh, uh, because okay. Chi was, yeah, I I don't believe I met Chi. I might have met Chi before he passed away. I it, it's kind of a blur because I was so excited to be there. I I even met the producer, you know, mm-hmm. the guy that makes Deftones sound so huge. That was a pinnacle moment for me, but yeah, the album, I guess, got scrapped or something. They, it never came out. Whatever I recorded. Um, That's insane. But I remember, like, you know, me and Chino, we were hanging out, we were smoking a little bit, and he was like, "I've got this song," and he was like, "You know, I feel like our minds are really different when it comes to melodies," and I'm, I'm like, I hit a roadblock on this song and so what i want you to do is basically just sing whatever comes to your head whatever melodies you can think of if you can think of some cool lyrics on the spot too i'll give you a couple runs basically and so that's what i did i i i kind of freestyled over this song this deftone song um and yeah if it wasn't for how well caviar went I would have never been able to do any of that, and that is some of the most badass shit that I've been ever. <laughs> it never came out, but I mean, that's to be able to go and meet everybody from Deftones, um, and kick it with them and record with them on a new potential song. Yeah, that was that was sick. You yeah, still got they, they seem like they're super down to earth. Like we've had a couple of. Uh musicians on on the podcast that have had you know their own deftones uh stories where they've either you know played shows with them or or have like worked with them so yeah yeah um thomas arak uh, you know talks to chino all the time like it, you know he'll be like yeah i talked to chino today i'm like that's that's crazy <laughs> dude i saw i saw a fall of troy open up for uh Deftones and Duran Gray in Santa Cruz, and that was that's so awesome. I bet that you was that like, was, yeah. it was nuts, man. And oh, it was weird because I felt like a lot of the main like Deftone fans were not feeling the fall of Troy, and I was like, dude, these guys are like amazing. You guys don't know what like you're missing out on if you're not paying attention. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, um. Yeah. So kind of moving moving forward, do you feel like sure. there was like a like a huge shift in the band when you guys um, wrote Happiness. Obviously, like that album didn't feature John, and you guys got uh, Jason playing bass, but I, like sonically, it just sounds so different than like the first two Dance Gavin Dance albums. And I feel like post hardcore in general was kind of finding their footing again or re- reinventing itself as a genre. Yeah, we we were really trying to push the envelope, obviously, and um, with Will's writing, Will has always had this kind of funky R&B approach to the genre, to post-hardcore, mm-hmm. which we... I, I just think that happiness was just a continuation of that. You know what I mean? And and um, not having John Mess there, uh, it it totally made the the weirdest impact on the record. I had to think of what of what to scream and sing, and it was me and Will. So Will would write a part, and, and I'd be like, "Oh, dude, that's sick. Okay, cool." Um, 
and I was like, oh, hey, I got I got a part for this fucking crazy part here that, you know, um, and we go back and forth that way. Um, because, so, you know, screaming's nothing new to me. Uh, I, you know, I was doing it back in FMR days, five minute ride. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, it, it, it felt pretty natural, but I, it was also kind of weird because it was, it, we really did. It was kind of like, what would John mess say right here? He'd do something goofy or weird, or, you know, <laughs> he'd, he'd say something shocking to shock you. He would, would you know what I mean? Like, so that's mm-hmm. what we would do. Which I felt like, yeah, you you and Will like definitely did a uh, a good job at like filling the void. When I think of like, I don't know the lyrics to like Carl Barker and and NASA, like there's like some wacky you know stuff being streamed in those songs. That, yeah, like like yeah. you, geez me, geez yeah. us. Like, <laughs> that is so <laughs> brilliant. Like, wow. If anything, yeah. Like, sorry, but it's like following after after NASA, like you go into Brown Town and like there's a section where like, you know, Will's screaming about, you know, girls at the salon. And it's it kind of y- y- y'all kind of do a thing where you're switching off while you're both screaming and you're singing, you know. Yeah. What did uh John think of the lyrics? though? <laughs> like, did, yeah. did was he like, did, was he impressed by how well y'all did or? emulating them yeah what were john's thoughts i'm curious honestly i have never asked him ever i oh. you know what i mean <laughs> and That's uh, when we when we would do uh so there was a 10-year tour obviously and I, you know i would jump up on stage for certain songs and we did uh the same thing in europe and that was really really fun and but uh my band didn't come and johnny's band didn't come just us um and so we did like solo sets in the beginning but then we would do like nasa and john mess would scream the parts of you know uh, of what uh will had done on the record and it sounded fucking sick i mean you know what i mean it it sounded like it, it fit it completely fit you know, it didn't feel out of place. Uh, so I would just say, like, yeah, it, it, it felt very seamless, you know. But, um, yeah, I've never really asked him, like, hey, do you like this, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's really interesting because we've talked to other people about John before, and they all kind of seem like they don't really ask him about the lyrics or anything ever. It's kind of private, I guess. But Yeah, I've never really asked him about – you know, I mean, he said the F word like 40 something times on the Death Star record. Yeah. <laughs> and not once did I even say like, why, why would you do that? You know what I mean? Like, why would you, why would you do that so much? Or why are you saying it's this? It's just I John. Just like, cool. I, you know. See, whenever I, I listen would... to Death Star, oops, sorry. I was just oh, saying, no, yeah, no. like. I was like, whenever I listen to Death Star, it's like, this is like manic, depressive mess. Like, he's especially like kind of emotional and moody on that album, I noticed. <laughs> what were you saying? Oh, yeah. I, yeah. No, I, I, I totally agree. Like, you know, John's John's a weird character. No, no questions about that. Um, the best character. You know, he's, he's <laughs> still kind of weird. <laughs> yeah, it just feels like cathartic. And I'm sure like you kind of get do that yourself i guess some songs like you're you're just kind of letting out what's kind of in your heart or in your mind right like it's just kind of like a cathartic experience it's it's what art is supposed to be all about you know what i mean like yeah you don't it's kind of like a tattoo like you could get a tattoo that means something that's awesome but you could also just you know get a flower or something that looks cool you know what i mean like mm-hmm. still appreciate it Definitely. you know what i'm saying like it could it, it it could have the biggest most in-depth meaning or it could mean absolutely nothing and it's still really cool you know what i mean yeah. like it, it does sometimes the best meaning is what you interpret the meaning to be well and it, like take fucking hip hop and rap and like the mumble rappers for example you know what i mean like there are there are people that are like fuck that shit 
like you know that's not that's not music and it's like aha you know <laughs> Uh, I, I'm I'm not one of those people, man. I I love the mumbling. I love yeah. it all. I don't think any of us are. It's we all a, love it. Uh, and I don't mm. I don't say mumble rapping. I would just say trap. You know what I mean? Like yeah. trap trap mm-hmm. music or whatever. That's yeah. what they're referring to when they're like, I can't understand it. Well, who fucking cares? Doesn't you don't have to understand it? You know what I mean? Like cigarros cigarros fucking uh like wrote his own language <laughs> and, and it's just singing you know what i mean like just <laughs> what the fuck is you sang along dude just, i always i always uh, thought it was like a nordic language or, or some like <laughs> eastern european type of deal. i never thought it was like his own language he made it's, it's called hope hope landic well yeah. <laughs> so it's like it's like kind of like icelandic but it's not it's yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. and it's gibberish <laughs> and it's like and it's dope so yeah yeah that's go coming think, back to john mess lyrics that's kind of how i feel i think it's just like a emotional resonance thing like if you can feel the raw emotion that they're like putting into these syllables and words and phrases and like nonsense but like sure. there's a connection to it yeah absolutely man i i totally agree with that um awesome so before we get into like kurt's uh, solo stuff do you guys have any more uh oh yeah I got related it. questions you want oh, to tee off well. yeah uh, actually i'll follow you all right <laughs> uh well Recently, we've been talking about happiness, so I was kind of wanting to go more in depth in that. But uh, before I do that, I wanted to wish you a happy belated birthday. Cause yeah, you was your birthday last well, weekend, right? You. Yes, it you was. It was. Thank you. Happy I had a great birthday. Day. I was yeah. saving that for the for <laughs> everything is beautiful talk. But yeah, happy, happy belated <laughs> birthday. Thanks, <laughs> I appreciate that. But uh, anyways, um. Yeah, so we've been talking about happiness. We've done the first six songs, and I guess it's really awesome that you ended up coming in, like, probably sandwiched between, like, basically our episodes. And Zach, so, Zach's going to be uh, here next week, actually. Who is? Uh, Zachary Guerin. <laughs> nice. Hell yeah. yeah. Cool. So you'll get all, right, you'll so get we got all, all, all the, the flavors. <laughs> all the perspectives. Oh, the funkiness. Cool. <laughs> so I guess my first question is, uh, like, what were y'all listening to back then? Like, what were you to like get to like inspire you for this album? For happiness. For happiness specifically. So what I can remember, uh, we were listening to literally everything in the van, which is, you know, that's kind of it. Like, when you're on tour so much, it just inevitably uh, affects you. But, man, uh, Will, whenever Will drove, it was always a lot of Lil Wayne. Um, (laughs) Beautiful. That was like peak Lil Wayne, too, right? Dude. Carter 2, Carter 3, Lil Wayne? The same, I am a Martian, like, dude, all that shit. And then, uh, you know, Eric Eric Lodge would be in the car, and he, you know, back when he played bass, and... uh, he would play like more M83 or um, I remember we were really hyped on MGMT's first record. Oh, that was uh, good. A classic. In yeah. fact, I absolutely that I remember Matt was super into the MGMT record and we would always listen to that record too. Um, but um yeah, I mean, lots of at the drive-in, obviously. Like, um, I love the the Blood Brothers. Like, you know, those those are the bands that have always influenced me. Huge uh, Blood Brothers fan here. Crimes is like one of the most mind-blowing albums. Yeah, it sure. really is. Yeah, the, um, way ahead of its time for sure. Glassjaw. I mean, we obviously love you know Glassjaw and and. Uh, you know, refused. You know, refused was really. Right. You know, uh, we would listen to that, and you know, obviously, uh, fuck. But I don't know. Like when I was when I was doing happiness, uh, 
I just I don't really know. I I feel like I would I've always listened to Elliot Smith a lot. Oh, that's like, cool. Elliot Smith, I've really you know, and then you know the Beach Boys and the Beatles because of Elliot Smith, really. Um, he held the Beatles in such high regard, and uh, I you know I had a huge phase with the Beatles. Uh, Radiohead, listen a lot, a lot of Radiohead. Like I mean, just pretty much the you know. I'm it's trying. To, <laughs> yeah, it's, I'm trying it's to like that I'm time. Going, but. Foles, remember <laughs> Zach Foles? Foles? Yeah. Yes. F, uh, F, yeah, F O A L S. Yes. Uh, that first record was, oh man, it was great. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. That was like, that was like. Yeah, that, that one's sick. Oh, uh, that uh, was like, I don't know, like, I guess prime indie music for me. Like that, like, that came out like around the same time as, uh, Block Party, Silent Alarm, and like yeah. that, that MG, yeah. MGMT album. Man, that was some good shit. Yeah. Good. 2000. So, yeah, I, I don't, I mean, Will would also play some really obscure, like, screamo bands, like kind of scramsy bands. Okay. Too. Yeah. Like so, Page 90, was it Page 99 or, yeah, like kind of those think, weird, weird scram bands. Sasha. Oh, okay. Uh, Actually, Kurt, I'm, I'm super curious about that. You know, you know, John had to leave, so it's like, when did Will learn scream vocals, or like, you know, did you, like did someone have to like help him out, help him out with vocals, or like how much experience did he have with vocals before he took on that kind of mantle? Absolutely none. And, oh. and the, <laughs> the craziest thing too is, uh, back then, I mean, Will is still kind of this way too. Is He's kind of an introverted guy. He's not really too loud and everything. Um, and I remember when uh, Will called me and was like, yo, dude, um, John Mess left the band and Eric Lodge is out as well. Um, and but it's OK. You know, I'm going to we're going to keep this band going like I, I don't give a fuck. Right. And he's okay. like, I'm I'm going to scream and play guitar. And I'm going to do the old songs and scream and play the guitar, too. And I was like, I was I was in such disbelief, you know, I did not believe him. And then the first practice, we went through the whole set and he screamed the whole fucking thing and played the guitar at the same time. And I was just like, like all the John's parts, like from... every single lyric of John's. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> he said That's you... amazing. Will said, and you like, speak of me in disbelief. I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> straight up. I, I, Yeah, I thought we were screwed. And then that first practice, I was like, okay, we're good. We're actually, we're good. we can do this. So it was, it was pretty incredible. And even to this day, uh, sometimes John Mess loses his voice. It just happens, right? Mm -hmm. And DGD will still play. And John will sc or um, Will will scream the entire set and play guitar at the same time. So, yeah. mode, if, I told you ever, <laughs> if you ever, if we ever get to see DGD play live again, come to one of the last shows and maybe John Mess's voice will be out and you can watch Will Swan scream and sing at the same time and nobody even fucking notices <laughs> yeah i live in florida and that's usually the last on the set list so hey maybe i'll see it <laughs> there you go i mean it's it you got a 50 50 chance the voice i feel like i, I, feel like I would notice because anytime i i see them live i try to like position myself where i'm like kind of in front of john like, it was <laughs> it was kind of a half joke. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm just, I know. Uh, of course, John has such a big, big personality and and a huge element to to that band and the whole stage. Um, yeah. I mean, he he set us apart from from all the other kind of uh, bands that were going on at the time. It was like, you know, oh, I guess a lot of it. I, I think that's one of the big elements is is uh, John's yeah. weird weird screaming. Because <laughs> even even on Downtown Battle Mountain, his scream was so weird. Definitely, yeah. yeah. It was like, it wasn't traditional. 
it, uh, <laughs> you know, it would go down. It, it, it like really, and then he kind of, you know, refined it, which we all kind of do. Yeah. We get, we get better. But it's like so hard to imagine like that type of music without him now, which is like so weird because he's like so different than everyone else. So. There were some there were some bands back in the day. Obviously, the number twelve looks like you. Yeah. Uh, you know there were dual singing bands, the Blood Brothers, obviously. Um, but uh, but yeah, th- there was there was a there was a cool there was a cool thing about DGD. That's why obviously they're they're still kicking, which is incredible. Yeah. So uh, this kind of brings me to another question, I guess, based off the Will stuff, is that how did Zach Garen like come into that uh, album? Yeah, so yeah, that sounds that like was, a good question for Zach, but go on, yeah, Kurt. We'll get that, a little, uh, little both sides. Sure. <laughs> uh, to my knowledge, uh, Zach, Zach was already in the band when I joined, but oh, yeah. uh, what he'll probably tell you is Sean O'Sullivan, the guitar player before uh, Zach, uh, quit like mid tour or something, or or very abruptly, I guess. And Zach was the merch guy. And, you know, Zach and Will were pretty inseparable. They were, like, best friends. And Zach was the merch guy. And Zach was, a you know, he's a killer guitar player. Um, that's usually how that shit goes, you know. The, the person <laughs> that's closest to you and most most able <laughs> yeah and they, oh man yeah. they vibe so well together but like the really happiness like, especially happiness yeah yeah absolutely and that's, uh, uh so yeah, that's how zach came into the band is he was already you know he was already he, there he was a merch he was you know he was selling merch for dgd that's interesting because like i i kind of almost figured that maybe he came in with you because y'all are pretty tight now right y'all do everything together it seems like so <laughs> yes me and zach have always been tight i don't think we've ever fought in our entire lives and and it's it's pretty crazy that there's still people around that i have like never had really a a tiff with <laughs> yeah. and that's Wait, so- kind of a good uh segue into uh everything is beautiful like okay, it's man. one of my favorite records of all time like oh. super iconic. Sorry to yeah. butter you up, but like, <laughs> oh, I just love I love that album and I listen to it like still on a weekly basis. But obviously you had um Zach and and uh, Joe on it. Um, so how how did that album like come about? Uh, hey, most like, sorry. I, I just it's like before we move on, I I just wanted to say like on self trepanation like on later like later performances y'all had poor john scream like the intro for self trepanation all by himself but before that you and you and will y'all did this sick combo you know will he screamed one day y'all and then you you know you had this little callback thing and i think that was a super dope way to perform that little heavy piece like i, uh-huh. I you know i'm sad y'all stopped that thanks man i mean i i yeah uh Self trepanation is such a weird song. It was like okay, it was like the the weirdest part. But we we like those kind of like breakdown like ba 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 ba. You know, just the very dramatic, loud. Cause yeah, it's fun to play live and and uh, I've always done uh, different vocals live than I do in the studio. I mean, you try to be true to what you do in the studio, but uh, in a live setting it's cool to like fill in the blanks and like I would help, I would help Will, so to speak, you know what I mean? Like, so that we would kind of carry the look. And yeah, I, I would do a lot of the screaming that Will originally did on, on rec on record. I would do them, uh, live. Um, okay. Yeah. 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 And that's a lot of the reason why, you know, (laughs) There are some there are some not so stellar uh, performances online of me because I just didn't give a fuck. I would you know I would just scream my lungs out and then I was like oh yeah I have to like sing this beautiful part now. 
honestly, that, yeah, that yeah. like makes I mean, for uh, a great performance as well. Just you know, seeing somebody like go that hard that they lose their voice. I mean, it was like yeah. a common thing, uh, especially for I guess more local bands. You know that that um, that I remember. You know, like watching in like small shows in San Jose, even bands like Heavy Heavy Lolo. Before they got big, it was like more about, I guess, the physical performance sometimes than like sure, yeah, trying to be on on key and every you know, and and stuff like that. See, it's like it's just like watching shows like that. It's like you know, you want to go when you want to record an album. It's like yo, I want to record some of the the best lines my voice can do, some of the hardest, some of the softest, you know, sure. all that. And yeah. then it's like you record it and it sounds great, but then you realize, oh shit, I gotta do this like six days <laughs> well, I mean, you know I mean, and make it sound good you know <laughs> totally one of my favorite uh oh, oh no, I, mean, go. I was gonna say one of my favorite um things that you did was i think the way you hit repeat repeat on tree village is like <laughs> and it, it sounds it, like Moses always says it sounds really painful but it's like i that's like the way you hit it i think sounds so good honestly and especially at the 10-year reunion tour that or the 10-year tour that was um yeah, like that. The footage of that, I, like, I, like I just love the way you hit that. Thanks, man. I, I, yeah. And uh, back to like, you know, when when I was in DGD, there were like I didn't use in ear monitors ever. I didn't use earplugs. Nothing. You know what I mean? Like I had cymbal splash decay in my ears, one hundred percent of every show. You know what I mean? I couldn't mm-hmm. get enough. I couldn't get enough monitor out of any system. It, you know, it, it was so frustrating. And now I realize that like in-ear monitors help so much because you don't push yourself because you can hear plenty. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. And Definitely. so it was this constant battle between uh what can i hear and what can they hear you know what i'm saying because if you can't hear yourself it doesn't it doesn't do you any good that your mic is just cranked so that everybody can hear how much you can't hear (laughs) you know what i'm saying Okay, so um, let's listen here, sir. Okay, so I I actually I actually performed I'm Down with Brown Town for my junior year talent show. And I, uh, it went a little similar to that. Uh, I couldn't hear, yeah. but they could hear plenty, you know? It's really tough. It's very tough. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I think I could do it pretty well, you know, some of the time. But... Uh, when you're, you're right, when you're doing it every single night, it's it's really tough. Um, the only way I can do it now is is with the in ears, because uh, it really saves your voice. It just you don't push too hard. Uh, but it was a learning curve, you know. You ha- I had to uh, learn that aspect of my instrument. Um, yeah, hey man, and uh, I, I'd say you, it definitely sounds like you found that on uh, everything was beautiful and like your other solo material. And uh, I believe Moses had something to lead in with that. Yeah, just to kind of um, transition back to that, I guess tell us about like the making of that album. I would say yeah. it's a pretty important album in like a lot of people's lives. I know like a handful I'm... of people that have the album artwork like tattooed on their arms and legs shout out to denise and um, (laughs) i I guess like did you know that this album was going to be like that important but also like take us through some of like the process of making that sure that record yeah so uh i was living in an apartment at the time um with a couple roommates and um zach would drive from salinas to uh citrus heights like sacramento area um and he would come and just stay with me and we would sometimes he'd stay for like a week and we wouldn't get a single thing done um and other times 
you know, he'd be there for a couple days or it, it would be crazy. It would be like he'd be there for like five or six days and then we would we would act we wouldn't do shit for like the first you know <laughs> five or six days you know <laughs> and the last the Straight last vibing. few hours we would like just nail it like just be like oh my god this is the sickest part ever and then he'd be like all right i'm bouncing <laughs> i got to go home so <laughs> we would do that a lot he would he would come to Sacramento, he would drive up to Sac and um, and write with me, uh, and I'd say that took uh, maybe a few months. I don't know, a couple months of that. And then once we, and of course, like I was doing a lot like birds as well, so I was doing a lot of that kind of stuff. Um, touring a lot and stuff so it was it was kind of like in my downtime in my free time i was able to make this happen uh with zach and um we went to josh benton to record the record and yeah that was kind of when blue swan records was uh getting started Mm mm-hmm and uh yeah everything just kind of that you know i got signed to to blue swan through will and will paid for the recording and um yeah and then me and zach recorded it in uh in freaking yeah like literally like a couple blocks away uh at josh's house and yeah we just had joe is so crazy Joe was probably there for maybe a day, and then he was done. Um, Only a day? And I think we we did that at Puss Cavern, which is in, um, where Cake recorded a lot of their records. Nice. Um, yeah, so I guess tell us about, about the artwork. Is there a story behind that artwork? Is, like, like I said to me, like it's pretty much iconic, like... Like, one of the coolest uh, album, like, covers I've seen, for sure. Thanks, man. Um, I like to follow uh, just random artists. Mm -hmm. Uh, And somehow I came across this dude named Corey Curly Swope. And... uh, Shout out. That dude's an awesome artist. Yeah, he's he's incredible. And... um, he does a lot of people's artwork. It's like mm-hmm. he has a very distinct style. He does a lot of like super metal bands. They love their his shit. And uh, he does like a lot of um, like old scene looking shirts. Mm-hmm. Like like old school looking. Like like a day to remember would have like just this nasty like neon monster <laughs> shirt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's really monster merch a lot of detail and just in your face like disgusting uh yeah grotesque it's, <laughs> he's, uh, he's great dude he's, he's a huge contribution to the scene for sure yeah but uh nobody really knew about him and i think he was in college at the time maybe and uh i hit him up randomly and it's really crazy because I had some people working on that record for me. Donovan was helping me a lot. And he had somebody else uh, making artwork. And I forget how it went. Maybe it was Donnie or Sergio. or I, It was one of those two. And they were like, well, we need artwork like now, dude. Like it's it's like, you know, time clock's ticking, blah, blah, blah. Anyways, they were like, you've got one day to get something else, or else this is going to be the album artwork. And it was just the worst generic bullshit ever. So I was like scrolling through my Instagram, and I came across this thing that Corey had made on, on, on his Instagram, and he posted it. And I hit him up on instagram and i was like dude i have like one day 
to 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 get new album artwork like can you help me like I, I want something like this I really like this I really like the waves and I like <clears throat> how kind of grotesque these characters are but they're but they're happy and like it just you look at it and it makes you think like what the he- where is that you know what I mean like where the hell what world is that you know what I mean and um so he redid it he like re-sketched the whole thing and made it bigger and like cooler and he did all this crazy artwork uh for the vinyl um and uh yeah the rest is kind of history but uh he stepped up to the plate and really fucking you know arc yeah and i have since used uh other artwork uh that he's you know done for me so he he has been like this thing i have on my arm this tattoo right here i don't know if you can see it oh yeah yeah (laughs) Um, he, <clears throat> he made that. We'll, we see it. Not everyone else listening, but <laughs> I know. <laughs> but it's cool. No, it's a great. It's a great piece for sure. But Corey, Corey made that one as well, and uh, yeah, yeah. I, that was another thing. I was like, ooh, I really like that piece. And he goes, oh, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna remake it. I'm gonna make it better, and I'll send it to you. So we've just kind of gone back and forth and he'll make something and i'll be like "Ooh, i really like how that looks you know and then he'll do it so for sure and this might be kind of hard because i know like songs are almost like children but if you had to pick like a favorite one from from that record which would it be because oh man they're all so good but i'm Uh, like interested um shoot uh probably the the first one the 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 self-titled yeah one. it uh, really kind of sets the vibe of of like the record and it's a great opener for sure thanks man and, and uh i that keyboard that i have is broken and so it just breaks my heart every time i hear it because it's uh, like yeah <laughs> Dude, that's a shame. Actually, they were uh, was it in? Sorry, but was it your no, no, intention no. to like have it sound like a nearly uh, therapeutic, like the intro <laughs> to everything is beautiful? No, really, I listened to it today and I was like, whoa, like it, like uh, and especially when that uh, that lower pitch hits, like it almost like it seems to like lower you and soothe you a bit, like. Soothe me. Yeah, I I um, <laughs> shit, man. The, the lyrics really take me back to that time too I had just gotten married and so it, things weren't really going very well uh, in my life but I did have that you know what I mean and so um, that's kind of what I was saying and it, and it came out uh, very organically I don't, I don't even think I wrote that down uh, I, you know, I, I, that line came to me and, uh, from the know, heart, if, ev- if everything is beautiful, then it's, then it's because of you. It's, it, that was a, that was a, a, a genuine statement. It was like, um, you know, things aren't perfect, but, uh, I can, I can be optimistic and I can be, uh, thankful for, for where I am and, and, uh, see the the silver lining in things and that's something that uh i don't do very often it's like a message of hope a beacon for people it's yeah it's, a, it's like it's important... yeah it's like Sorry. telling yourself you know it's okay <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yo, i'm about the to soft up whisper. listening to this too stop my guy <laughs> but <laughs> Like I just I just think of like that whole album and for me like Desperate really stands out. I feel like it's such a good um mixture of like your vocals and and Zach's like guitar playing like when that chorus hits it's like whoa like I I, I don't like I can't even explain it. But do you have like a story behind behind that song? I totally have a story behind that song and um it's really cool uh 
So Zach sent me this song um, that was really cool, but, like, something was wrong. I, I, I remember telling him, like, I like it, but something's off. Like, uh, maybe slow it down or something. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And uh, I remember Zach was, uh, <laughs> he was, like, talking about this Chopped and Screwed, DJ Chopped and Screwed. Oh yeah, DJ um, Screw, who uh, yeah. from Houston, Texas, who did the that's, whole chop and screwed sound. Yeah, I don't really. You, that's a question for Zach. But uh, wow, I didn't know he was into that. <laughs> dude, yeah, Zach has a, a huge library of music in his head. It's awesome. Um, but uh, but anyways, uh, so he took the same. Zach took the same song that I said like sounded weird or off, and he slowed it down two and a half times. And he and he sent it to me, and I fell in love with the song. I was like, "Oh my god, this song's incredible!" And that's what Desperate is now. Yeah, oh, it's um, truly a beautiful song. Like a so, if you can imagine that song like sped up, that's what he sent me. So, sh- yeah, so it all it would almost YouTube be like and... asking dreams, because that was kind it of would uh, be, yeah. yes, upbeat. exactly. Dude. It's the same tempo. Yes, you're absolutely right. <laughs> He he wrote like a lot of different songs like that, and I would kind of go, mm, okay, like, well, I like this part, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, write a song around this part, or I like this, but I don't like this, you know what I mean? And um, and of course, like, I would write whole songs and bring them to the table, and he would give his two cents and be like, well, what if you did this or whatever? And that's how we kind of collaborated on that record. Um, you know, and and I think that's what really made the record special. So, yeah, and um, to kind of celebrate, you know, your birthday, you dropped those B sides from "Everything Is Beautiful," and on Instagram, you kind of uh made this like heartfelt post, almost like you know, talking about like recording that with Zach, and I think maybe like a couple days before, or the week before, you did uh something similar about working with uh Joe, and I believe. On both posts, uh, Joe commented like, "Oh, can't wait to or for people to hear what we've been working on." And I think Zach almost said something similar. Are those like was Joe referring to Royal Coda, or are the three of you guys getting together and working on something? Can Wouldn't you share that, that with us? We <laughs> <laughs> piece together the clues. I'll spill it. Um. So. <laughs> No, I think I think what Joe was referring to is the new Royal Coda album that we're working on currently. Um, and I think Zach was referring to the fact that me and Zach want to, you know, we've we've been talking recently and we we don't know what it's going to be. But, you know, Zach writes songs so much and, and he'll he sent me a batch of songs and you know i'm listening to him basically uh, yeah <laughs> that's, well that's, let's, let's put that out into the universe man i can't wait yeah. to hear some new zach and, and kurt stuff for sure it would be dope to have me zach and joe as a as a project that would be just it just makes sense man <laughs> like, <laughs> like a, like a chef's kiss man ridiculous. um <laughs> joe actually just got back from voodoo studios uh recording drums for uh skylar caparici's new project i don't know what they're calling it but yeah he stays busy because he he drummed for uh a marionette on on their new record he did yeah yeah totally yep and i i helped produce that record that's one of the first records i i'm like you know, kind of getting in the producing game a little oh, bit. Awesome. Did a great obviously, job. Obviously, you lended some vocals, and you know, you've done vocals for them before. I helped. Yeah, I helped Izzy uh, with the most of the choruses. Okay. Yeah, and I I was there for a few days, just kind of giving my two cents. Um, and it was fun. It was really fun. Uh, it was good to see them. It was like right before the the pandemic, so it was like we didn't know that shit was gonna. 
Yeah, that was so, a, yeah. definitely a interesting time, and I guess um, yeah, like how like how did you handle that? I noticed that you were going on live a lot at, you know, like when it first happened, and I feel like it was like a necessity for a lot of for a lot of artists. Like, hey, we're still here, and a good, great way to connect with your fans because you you know that's kind of what you would do in person like when you're on tour but because of the pandemic i feel like everybody had to like pivot and do like live streaming and you know go on ig live and and Mm -hmm. connect with the fans and stuff yeah i try to i try to do that stuff uh of course it's not the funnest thing in the entire world but um i do definitely try to do that that kind of stuff um for the people that are supporting me and um you know just fans like you like you said for 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 the people that that um desperately want music back and yeah uh, it's been a very difficult uh time you know trying to do i i hate doing the like a, a live performance on on like my phone or something like yeah, that yeah. <laughs> I, I have before and people love it and i do i just do it for them you know what i mean like uh yeah. and i, I feel I, like man i was there on ig live when you were you know busting out the guitar and just like man, i yeah. guess i'll do a multiverse and you know like just kind of like fucking <laughs> around it was dope to watch though yeah um you're right. It's 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 kind of a a thing that is necessary to to remind people that like, hey, you know, we're we're here and um we're still doing stuff and uh even though it's honestly this is kind of it's uninspiring. You know what I mean? It's it's I'm doing lots of stuff. I'm creating lots of music mm-hmm. and I love what I'm creating, but uh it's it's quite a challenge at at this point because you know with everything going on uh the life living is not a life that we usually would be fulfilling to our fullest We're we're not experiencing and so for me uh that's hard i have to kind of dig within uh a little a little deeper to find those those things i want to talk about when yeah because you get a lot of inspiration, I'm sure, from being on the road and living life. And absolutely, you know. yeah, yeah. And I, 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 re- I remember that um, you, Andres, and um, uh, Don, Donovan, like you know, you guys had some show set up in Texas, and oh. like a lot of people were doing that. And like I remember when I saw those dates, like you know, like I woke up and I saw you guys mention that, and I looked at. Uh, like first thing I googled was like, what are the COVID rates uh, in, in, Texas. in Texas? And unfortunately, uh, they were skyrocketing by the day. Not very good at that time, but yeah. So I'm sure that was like a huge uh, bummer. <laughs> we've tried to do uh, a slew of shows uh, two times, and the first time, it the literally the the we woke up that that morning and the ordinance was because it was open yeah and things were good and then by the time we were able to book it and plan it and blah 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 and then the day kept creeping up and creeping up and things just rapidly going out of control with this pandemic that you know uh we flew all the way there you know we paid all the expenses we brought a ton of merch you know what i mean and and only to, to, to just go back home and and it, you know the last time it was kind of the same thing it was well texas is open and uh they're you know they're doing social distancing and and uh uh two of the venues are outside we we don't know about the third one or whatever and i was just like uh i'm struggling so bad financially like can we make these happen and uh i ended up having to cancel those too and it was yeah. it was really really disheartening and just frustrating because um 
you know, the grocery stores are open, the airline companies are open, uh, the restaurants are fucking open. Uh, y- you know, it, it, it it's the same risk in my eyes of going to the grocery store. I mean, I, I, I do understand that you have to get necessities, but come on. If you haven't gotten a tub of ice cream or, uh, you know, a fucking something that was not essential in, during this time, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just I, there's... Dude, I, yeah, I do know what you're saying, and it's it's such a bummer, you know? Like, like for my, so for my job, I kind of have to travel around, and, like, the only two places that that I've been able to go are Canada and Brazil. And even that, like, it just feels weird. Like, yeah, like it's, is it really necessary, but it's, you know, my job and they're kind of making me go and I can't really say like, fuck no. Like, right. (laughs) Right. You know, and, and also this last time with, with the shows, uh, there were a lot of people online that said, Hey, like, we would love to see you, but we just don't think it's a good idea. And, uh, you know, Don, Donnie and I had to just kind of make a decision and, and to not do it. And it really bummed me out. It did. It, it, it really like kind of messed with me, but, um, I'm glad, you know, I'm glad that, uh, you know, I'm able to still release music and record music and, and that sort of thing, you know, trying to see that silver lining, you know, in, yeah. in every, in Man, every situation. I feel like we're getting we're getting close. We have to be, and it's it's mm. gonna be awesome, you know, when when tours are able, able to happen again, and There's we can a light. support the artists that you know that I we mean, love and stuff. Totally. I live in Texas, and I was definitely gonna try to go to one of the one or two of those shows, but yeah. Yeah, we'll see you next I, time. Don't worry. It, it, it really sucks that we kind of had to like fall off and not really announce it because if if we we announced it and then said some big thing about it, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it just and in this day and age, it would just give a bigger platform for people, and a lot of people were were you know saying some pretty mean things uh online and and you know i i get it i get it we're all frustrated and we're all upset you know what i mean and uh everybody does need to be responsible and that was one of those things where it was like yep uh it it, that is the right decision as as shitty as it as it was yeah um so to kind of oh wait i think you froze up Okay, looks like we got you again. Right here? Um, cool. So, yeah, to kind of go back to your solo stuff, you released um, What Happened in 2012. I think uh, Everything is Beautiful followed it, like, two years after. But we didn't get, you know, the, the next album till maybe, like, five years, I think it was. Um, so how, how did uh, There's a Place I Want to Show You come about and... And do you have like some fond stories of of that album? It almost feels like kind of like a guide to escapism or or something. Like even like um, you know, like some of the songs like like Too Much Space and and even like the cover art. It just kind of that's a, I don't know the kind of vibe I get. Yeah. So a a lot of my music is is very personal to my life. Um, I just always have been that kind of, uh, person and, uh, I think that's why people connect with it. But anyways, uh, there's a place I want to take you is an album that, uh, pretty much took me five years to make, um, not because I wanted to, but because of a lot of things going on in my life. I recorded that record almost three times before it was finally recorded. And I love that record, but I am just so glad that it's over. <laughs> yeah. Because it it uh 
I obsessed over that record for five years. Nobody needs to think about songs for that long. You should just make them and say, oh, that was cool, and go on to the next one. You know what I mean? Don't try and reinvent the wheel. You know what I mean? And that's kind of what we were talking about, how like every chord progression and every melody is really thought of already. So I just think that the the... The art that I make that is the best is uh, made more organically and yeah. not overthought. Which yeah, I think I think the polish shows though on the on the I want to sh- there's a place I want to show you though like it's really nice dude like it shows that you took five years to like perfect it. <laughs> Thanks. Well, I'm yeah, and that's why I'm so glad there's you know there's different perspectives out there because when i think of that record i'm like oh that that took that was such a that was hard that that was when it was done i was very like wow okay the the record's over um and i (laughs) yeah i was this next one i want to i want to take a you know a different approach you know what i mean like i i feel like that's kind of how i am all the time with with music but I kind of yeah, I kind of feel like I've been uh, hogging you for my co-host, um, but uh, <laughs> like I have one more question and I'll let them take over. Um, so you have you have that song with uh with uh, with Andre's um, hometown and yeah, uh, obviously it's kind of like it's kind of meta and you're um I guess kind of talking about you know like those keyboard and social media critics that that um yeah you know, like have a lot to say but they're not you know like they're not the ones making the music and like you said you're a person too and you know that like that's like the message about the song but there's like the underlying message where you're you know you're just a person as well so like i guess my question is I, and i feel like it's pretty co- like a common thing in like, like I guess he's seen bands and Dance Gavin Dance. A lot of fans, you know, just kind of put you guys up in this pedestal. And um, I don't know. I'm sure they do a lot of stuff that is, at the end of the day, it's all love. And they're passionate about the music. But I feel like um, they kind of do, like, stuff that kind of rubs you guys the wrong way, whether it's at a show. So I guess for the fans, like, what's a good way to approach like kurt travis and and kind of have like good vibes because i know like one thing is like don't approach somebody when they're eating and trying to enjoy a meal obviously (laughs) (laughs) yeah that's probably not a good time um you know i have met people that i am completely starstruck like i've met cedric you know and i've met Mm -hmm. And Daryl Plumbo, the singer of Glassjaw and shit. And uh, I kind of had this same question in my head, like, well, uh, what are the things that I'm – what am I going to say to this guy? You know what I mean? And I would I would definitely as, – as advice for somebody else, if you're nervous to talk to somebody, maybe you should think about what you're going to say when you come up to them uh and proclaim your whatever you want to say uh so for example i don't i mean it's fine people do it all the time but to me it's kind of a chore uh to talk about all the great things that i've done right Mm -hmm. so when i went up to cedric i just talked to him about his kids about his twin boys uh, because I don't give a fuck about what we're really talking about. I just kind of want to talk about something that he cares about or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah. You know? So I tried not to say anything about how uh, I fucking love all your albums and blah, 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 and you just inspire me. And, of course, he probably already knows that, right? Mm-hmm. So – I went up to him and I just had a regular conversation with him and it was really cool. And, you know, I got a picture with him and that was that, you know, and and I walked away thinking, wow, that was 
I didn't completely blow it. I didn't like <laughs> <laughs> I didn't completely just start crying and be like, dude, I'm not worthy. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> you're at you're at the dude's show, right? You already you obviously I mean you think highly of the person. Maybe you're at the show and you don't even know the person, but chances are they came to your show. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, it was a Zavala's show. So right after the Mars Volta uh, stopped playing, he was just playing under his Zavala's name uh, yeah. and went to go see him at uh, Ace of Spades in Sacramento. And, uh, yeah, and I got to talk to him for a little bit, and that was one of the things that I, that I personally – did was I didn't talk about music because that's your job. You know what I mean? Like, of yeah. course, it's great to talk about your job, but as wonderful as your job is, it's still your job. So, yeah. but you know what? I, you're there in my eyes. I'm doing you a service, right? So, in my eyes, if you want to come up to me and say, Hey Kurt, like I just wanted you to know that uh, the Death Star and Happiness were two of my favorite albums, and I really appreciate that. I'm not gonna be like, Ugh, oh my god, you know? Yeah, what I mean? yeah, for sure. I'm gonna be like, oh, thank you so much because, I, you know, I, 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 that's part of it. That's part of the gig. You know, mm -hmm. I signed up to, to for this to happen. You know what I mean? Yeah. So mm -hmm. if I was pissed off at every single person that did that you know uh you'd probably get pissed off a lot it, and it would be a <laughs> douche <laughs> people that people that do that are douche so you know what i mean like how are you going to uh not accept a compliment you know i don't know so anyways yep. for sure because you got me thinking like man if i ever ran into cedric i'd want to like bring up uh, Initiation, which was at the drive-in song from one of their earlier albums, Acrobatic Tenement. <laughs> and it'd be hilarious if he was like, I fucking hate that song, bro. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, dude, yeah. Your one thing that you say to Cedric could be could trigger him in some way because he's yeah. a weird <laughs> so, I, I guess I guess that's, like, another thing that, like, fans also need to realize. Like, man, like, you could be having a bad day, so... If you do have, like, a kind of a shitty interaction with, like, I guess, like, an artist that, that you, like, uh, look up to, you know, you like, you never know what yeah. was happening that day. Yeah, sure. you know, it doesn't mean they're a shitty person and just might be off that day. And, here, okay, here's tip number two. Try not to be too drunk when you <laughs> come to, or when you go and talk to, you know, your person that you look up to that you went to their show and you get to talk to them i know sometimes you can't help that but that yeah and that's the problem with with alcohol isn't it is you can't realize it but somehow it's just, common. <laughs> <laughs> just common courtesy you but know, unfortunately I feel, like, I feel like the artist has a right to be kind of rude to you if, if you're fucking hammered you know what i mean and you're trying to have a conversation you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Keep it, keep it short. Pretty Just much go. anyone has the right to be rude to you at that point. You pretty much have an I love you man in you, and, and that's about it. You know? Yeah. Uh, anything <laughs> past that, I'm, I'm probably just going to wish I wasn't talking to you. You know? Uh, but I think that goes for everybody. Like, fucking, don't be too drunk when you talk to somebody, and uh, Think about what you're gonna say before you say it. That's yeah, that's, yeah. Definitely be mindful of their time because you're probably tired as fuck after a show. Yeah. Sure, sure, but but I I do I I really feel like every artist should kind of that is part of the gig. Yeah. You gotta, yeah. You gotta walk off stage yeah. and the people you run into, you gotta fucking high five them and shit and be like thank you man thank you for coming thank yeah, you for like, being yeah. part of this. <laughs> So yeah, I guess like um, when I was a you know when I was a teenager like it was pretty early on Newfound Glory was one of my favorite bands and <laughs> you know like yeah. the the first two times that I saw them I was lucky enough to kind of 
talk to them and like one other guitar player steve like literally just talked to me until we ran out of things to talk about and then uh sometime after that i saw under oath when i and i was like 17 and uh-huh. they like literally sat at uh at a Taco Bell with me and my friends and like they ate with us and talked to us and after that I honestly didn't care to talk to any other musician because like <laughs> like and it sounds kind of shitty but I'm like nothing's gonna top like those experiences so, it, it almost it almost helped me because like you know like I just view these people as like like a regular guy like you know me yeah. and you know yeah. like <laughs> But well, that's just you, Moses. I'm still pretty nervous. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that, song, <laughs> that song, Hometown. Uh, when I when I sent it to Andreas, he kind of did a first draft and sent it to me, and uh, it was definitely one of those like, oh, okay, that's where we're going with this song. <laughs> All right, okay, like uh, so Can really. We- I think it was more of Andreas's uh, feelings, you know what I mean, at the time. And I was kind of there like, yeah, yeah, you're right, Andreas. Like, this is a this is a good topic for this song, you know? Okay, I think- yeah, I guess my, my last, last question is how how did that, like, Jesus. relationship come about? Were you, were you a fan of, uh, I can't remember the name of his old band before he went, uh, so, like, you know, like, under his, like, actual name. But. Yeah, Terra Terra Live. There we go. Yeah. Live. Yeah. Um. So when I was in a lot like Birds, uh, we played a show in Bakersfield, and it was a dope show. I think he had played the show with us, mm-hmm. and a lot like Birds never got hotel rooms. We were like, no hotels. That's that's that. Like, any hotel we buy is like money wasted and blah blah blah. Okay. So. We stayed at everybody's houses, and Andreas uh, let us stay at his house. Nice. And that was the first time I had met Andreas, and I kind of didn't think anything of it, right? Um, but some of the guys in A Lot Like Birds had like kept in touch with Andreas or whatever. Um, and I remember Corey used to wear a Terra Live shirt, like – and he like never would change it. Like he he wore that shirt. Oh my god. Second skin, man. It was a second skin. Until it fell off. Yeah. So <laughs> uh, I do remember Terra Live. And then uh, I was playing a show uh, in Placerville of all places where I live, and I was doing a solo show, and Andreas was on the bill. And it was one of his, I think, one of his first shows. It was when Strange, Strange Memories had come out, huh. uh, and I was blown away. I was like, "Holy shit, who is this guy?" And then I realized I was like, "Oh, it's Andreas." <laughs> and then at that point, it was like, "Fuck!" Like Andreas was getting big. Like things were really popping for Andreas, and. We played a, a bunch of other shows. We played, uh, we did a couple tours together. I mean, yeah, we've we've been active in in each other's careers for a while now. Um, but that's what really kind of sparked it was that that one show in Placerville, and I just realized, oh, like he's doing a solo thing now, and he's not doing Terra Live, and it's a different sound, and I fucking love it. Like it, Terra Live was good, but. Andreas really found like his thing uh, on on that first record, and then yeah, the rest is history. For sure, like he has like such a iconic delivery and like his so tongue in cheek lyrics, yeah. like like him on a Marion on a marionette song, it's about to be a banger every time. And like <laughs> you too, of course. So it's like weird. Like they need to have a song with both of you on it for sure. <laughs> no, I know. <laughs> we're uh we're we're beginning to be kind of the dream team. The uh the multiverse two like was a huge success. Yes. And, um yeah, that was really fun and like you know it, it was it's definitely going to be a timestamp sort of song because it's uh 
you know it's kind of our pandemic song yeah know? a reflection of the times and um yeah is is donovan an official member of the multiverse family like is he gonna be in <laughs> multiverse three you know the what's universe crazy? is growing is Andreas sent me the song, and of course I did my verse, and then Andreas was like, you know what would be even cooler? And, <laughs> and so we got Donnie on it, and it, oh my god, it it really, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping we do another uh, three-singer thing, uh, three-singer song uh, again, because that was pretty cool. It's like the closest... I've been to uh, a boy band before, you know. Yeah, just... yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which, man, you got the voice for it for sure. <laughs> oh, thank you. Scene boy band, dude. It's, it's where it's at. Scene yeah. boy band, yeah. I mean, that's what <laughs> is, right? <laughs> uh, innovating, right here, man. Creating the next level. The next, uh, so, what's it called? What was that band with all the singers in it, in, like 2010? Isles and Glaciers. Yeah, I was in glaciers. Do me. New I was in glaciers. Way better though. All right, who's gonna oh, yeah. who's gonna take it away with the questions now? Since I've Ryan, uh, it's your turn. Been hogging it. Uh, hey, hey, man, it's it's cool. Like I really appreciate Kurt taking the time with us today. Like just to, like hang out and just talk. Like I remember I saw you play your uh, you guys played like a your solo album had just come out like a couple years back. You played at the um, chain reaction and you're just like such a nice, humble guy. And it's just like, it's really cool to see you here, dude. Like just spending time with us talking about stuff. But I was going to ask you like, uh, <laughs> I was just going to ask you, man, like Royal Coda, what's going on with that, dude? We, we got some stuff cooking. Um, we've been sitting on kind of a lot of content, uh, because there are some internal workings uh, going on. I don't know if I can spill the beans yet, but, uh, it, it, you know, kind of... Um, An is-what-it-is situation? Yeah, so so we've been... Uh, we've been, you know, we have, like, a single that we've been sitting on for a while, and then we have... A new full length nice. that is pretty much done. It's like seventy percent done, sixty five percent done. Um, and I go back to the studio February first uh, to Dude. finish. So I am gearing up. It's it's you know days away. So uh, super. Sick. Yeah, but uh, yeah, Royal Coda. Uh, I mean, we're doing as much as we possibly can in during this time. Uh, I, I've really wanted to do a live stream. That would be like something that I would love to do. But uh, they really do cost kind of a lot of money. Uh, quality. If you want to do a really good quality uh, live stream, it it's it's not cheap. Um, yeah. So definitely. And Royal Coda. Um, me and Will live in Sacramento area, but everybody else doesn't. Okay. Sergio lives in Vegas. Uh, mm-hmm. Stefan lives in Asheville, North Carolina, and Joseph lives in Nashville. Whoa. So, um, yeah, his his family moved there. I don't know, a couple years ago maybe. He's been there for a little bit. Um. But so yeah, uh, Royal Coat is just kind of hard to do on a whim, and mm. you know the one I the the live stream that I got to do with Joe and everybody like I paid out of pocket for that and <laughs> Damn. and really it was it was last minute and I can't believe yeah. how well it came out. By the way, it's on YouTube. Um, nice. You can just put in. Kurt Travis live at the Chain Reaction. It should it should pop up. Um, Definitely but post that on our page and our social medias. Let everybody it's great. remind oh, It's sure. one of my favorites. Yeah, it's one of my favorite yeah. performances. My sister Rachel um, got to sing with me uh, at the Chain Reaction. Um, it's it's definitely an uh, I'm proud of it. It's a good representation of of the music. Yeah, it was um, definitely absolutely. a solid 
performance. I watched it live, yeah. so it was cool. Hell yeah, yeah. So yeah. and you know, I I I did a bunch of things. You know, I did uh, shelf life acoustic and everything. Mm-hmm. That was the first time I've done that. So um, I thought there was a lot of you know, I'm tried to make it special and. Uh, you definitely uh, accomplished that, dude. Hell yeah. <laughs> well, I guess what was the story um behind shelf life? Cause all right, like. I remember uh, instant or no, sorry, artificial selection came out, and I didn't like really know like anything about it. I mean, like you know, I listened to the band, but I didn't keep up with like any like updates or features that they like if they mentioned those. So it like literally uh, came to me as a surprise, and like I was driving to the beach, and like. I hear your voice out of nowhere, and, like, <laughs> I literally yeah. almost started tearing up, and my wife was like, are you kidding me right now? <laughs> <laughs> like, I never, like, you know. Oh, bless I, your heart, I, man. Yeah. I have such it, a, like, oh. black heart, and I, ne- like, hardly ever show any emotion, so. But, like, the pure surprise of that just really got to me, I guess. Yeah, so, uh, I recorded that with Drew Owens. And, um, sorry, I'm going to take a drink of water real quick. Uh, go for it, man. <laughs> Got to stay hydrated. Um, sorry. I, yeah, I recorded it with Drew Owens and I didn't record it like with the band. Um, but I guess I, I remember Will either texting me or calling me and saying like, Hey, I have this song and it really feels more of like a, throwback kind of odd song out of the record and i really want you to sing on it um and he was like i really want you to kind of like write as like almost the whole song if you want like you could just do the whole song and um so yeah so uh i just did my best and i was you know, going through some, you know, going through it, being, yeah. you know, being emo Kurt, and uh, it really kind of, the stars kind of aligned with that, with that one, and uh, I'm, I'm really happy with how it came out, and yeah, it's, it's, it's a cool track, but I, yeah, I, I know it's kind of a weird uh, thing. Is Evaporate on Artificial Selection as well? Yes, yes. Okay, so maybe. Because, yeah, that song, they even used some of the old lyrics, right? Yeah, yeah. There was a lot of, like, references and, like, old melodies. Like, even, like, the like the guitar riff from Backwards Pumpkin songs on there. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah. So, I think that is really kind of the reason why... He, maybe, that's, maybe that's why Will had the idea. And uh, Tillian... Uh, a, was was happy with it you know what i mean he was like damn this is this is perfect Mm -hmm. and also i think uh because of the fact that it's in seven i'm kind of the the man for the job uh writing vocals in anything other than four four and three four is is tough Mm -hmm. uh five four is a little easier but seven is just weird um and so, yeah, I think maybe he was he was happy that <laughs> yeah. he didn't write anything for that fucking part. <laughs> yeah, I don't blame him, man. That it's I was when I was listening to it, I was like, is that seven? And I was like, damn it, it's in seven over four. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a challenge, but I, you know, I think I made it feel uh, not like it was seven. You know, killed it, dude. Thanks. Yeah. Knocked it out of the park. Thanks, guys. But uh, but yeah, that's that was a fun one. That was definitely a fun one. And uh, oh, the uh, the credits are actually on the back of the album. Um. It, yeah, I thought it was gonna say like featuring Kurt Travis or you know, and the other song Evaporate, it, like featuring andrew wells but they didn't do any features on that album and they decided to put the credits on the back of the album or whatever 
Yeah. And I remember calling up their – or texting their manager and being like, dude, I thought you were going to credit me on the song. Like I sang like the whole song. You're not going to put my name on there? And it was like, oh, we did. We just put it on the back. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, which is kind of weird because well, I mean... when it comes to the band, like one thing that we look forward to now is all the like features because mm-hmm. they get – not only uh vocal features but like some awesome guitar features from yeah from yeah. zach and and you know other people that that they collaborate with martin, martin uh yeah bianchini bianchini yeah i was yeah. gonna say bianchi <laughs> yeah, we had him on the show too great guy yeah he uh taught us how to say it correctly <laughs> yeah. nice nice yeah martin's dope oh he's a really cool guy very interesting. Yeah, do you guys have uh, any more questions for Kurt? Uh, Ryan, you got anything? Um, I was just going to ask, like, um, like, you don't have to, like, go on a tangent or anything, but I was just going to ask, like, as a, like, musician, as, you know, as a songwriter and all that stuff, like, what are your, like, aspirations? Like, what do you want, like, your legacy to become, like, at the end of it all? You know what I mean? Sure. Uh, well, when I was a kid, I, I, I remember telling my mom, and it was probably in a in a uh, a fit of anger, but <laughs> uh, it it's it's really rang true with me in, in my life. And I I told her uh, I don't care how successful um, I I'll be the greatest musician that ever lived or a bum on the street just playing his guitar and um that will be okay with me and uh as i've grown older i've realized that that's that's harder to achieve um it's just like complete uh you know contentness or whatever uh but i really try to remind myself that i've already done uh more than most and that i should you know the cup is half full sort of thing but like i said i'm i'm more of a like nothing is good enough sort of guy (laughs) Um, and that's why i have a lot of songs that are just uh, floating on my hard drive because i don't i don't put them out you know i i i don't think they're ready or or whatever and the the b-sides the B sides, I dropped those because, you know, those those were songs that didn't make it, and I was listening to them, and I was even listening to like how my voice sounded back then, and I I I love it, and so I was like, shit, I'm gonna put this out. I think um, the true fans will really like uh, the honesty, the the rawness of these tracks, and. Um, even the fourth track, uh, which I did put out on uh, a split EP with Paul Travis, um, I just put up the demo because uh, it, it's just so vulnerable. It's like you can hear that like I'm not even saying the words yet. I'm I'm literally it was a freestyle that I was just singing over this part, and I was like, oh, that's really cool, and I kept it, you know, and then. Yeah you re-record something like that uh some of the magic kind of goes away not in a bad way but it does that that first recording of of your of your cool part that you're excited about um definitely that first demo is is really uh crucial so like that lightning in a bottle kind of (laughs) thing it really is it's it's a it's a light bulb sort of situation yeah um uh, i was gonna stay i was gonna say for that song stay please did you really have to go that hard on like tugging the heartstrings man like <laughs> like oh so man that <laughs> like I, you you called yourself emo kurt uh earlier and shit that's like as emo as it gets right there dude made me made every me time me. i hear that song i need to get like hugged by somebody bro <laughs> It's pathetically sad. I I know. I I don't know how I got that sad, but uh, I did. <laughs> and, uh, 
That's yeah, art but... right there. That's art. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost even when I'm singing it, it almost sounds like I don't care how I how I sound or I don't care how I'm sing or you know what I mean? Like I I definitely wanted that uh I don't know, that just like I don't give a shit feeling. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, you you accomplished it in spades, dude. Awesome. But yeah, I don't ugh, fuck. I don't know how I come up with these things. Why don't you stay please and I will not run off, you know? Mm -hmm. Like that I remember <laughs> that when I thought of that I was like, oh shit, that's really cool. I need to keep that. <laughs> so <laughs> but yeah, I a lot of my stuff even especially back then was just you just got to have that intuition. You just got to whatever pops in your head. And that's usually the that's usually the the good one. The best the best idea is the one that comes first. Yeah. Cuz if it doesn't if it doesn't come then It'll never, like, it'll take months to figure that bullshit out. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Which is kind of where I am right now, to be completely honest. Uh, I went up to record Royal Coda, and I had ten songs to do, and I got five and a half done. Um, and it always happens this way. I, I say that, like, this is kind of a new thing, but it always kind of happens, like... I remember conversation piece. I had almost all the songs done and I was just literally freaking out that one song wasn't done. And I was just like, I can't do it. I can't do it. I'm too stressed out. I, you know, I, I'm just going to put something down just for the sake of getting it fucking done. You know what I mean? Um, and so I came back to it like a week later and I fucking killed it. You know what I mean? And it was done. Um, but yeah, if the is for me, if the idea doesn't happen immediately, then it's gonna take some time. <laughs> yeah, it's, <laughs> it's gonna be a bitch, you know. Um, but I'll still at this point, it, uh, you you work at it and you 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 uh you find the thing that oh okay that that part is really cool now. So yeah. Well, I have a question based off that. Are when you write, are you writing mostly like lyrics and like r like riffing or are you also like also writing guitar parts to like the chords that go with it or yeah so uh if i'm doing royal coda it's it's just vocals same thing with like dgd it would be just just vocals and even a lot like birds i didn't i didn't make any chord progressions or anything per se but when it comes to my solo stuff absolutely like i'm I start from the very bottom. I start, you know, drums and bass and I do the whole thing. Yeah, or or I'll I'll have an idea that's good enough to where I go, okay, I need to start from scratch so that I can build everything up cuz I hear everything in my head around the guitar or around the keyboard or around the bass and then once the idea gets uh, big enough and cool enough, then I go, okay, stop. Now we have to go and and start layering it, you know. And at that point, things change too. So um, I hope that was a good answer. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I mean I'm I'm satisfied with that. I was that that's really interesting. I mean, I, yeah. I didn't even realize you were doing you were going all the way to bass and drums too. So yeah, totally. Cause um, I don't know. It, it, you're right though. I, I probably start on the guitar. You know, I play in the guitar and I'll sing, and then I can hear everything else in my head how I kind of thinking it's gonna go. Um, and then that's the next step is is like building the song. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it's fun right. sometimes, and it's hard. It's hard a lot of the times too. <laughs> uh, you mind if I uh, hand it off to David real quick? Sure. Shoot, hey, Carrot. Uh, I'm curious uh, on the title track, Happiness. Uh -huh. My guy, like, 
Oh, did you? Was there an audio issue? Oh no no no! I I did a really fast like uh huh. <laughs> oh no! Oh, okay. <laughs> no um yeah dude from the lyrics are super heavy man um and I was always questioning I was like did Kurt actually let someone drown or what what's going on there? Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What the fuck, bro? <laughs> Oh, it was uh, like curious, Phil Collins, man. right? Right. So yeah. So uh, probably what you you're expecting is is true. Um, I oh. I heard the story from someone else, and it was a it was a family member that was close to me, and um, the yeah the a kid drowned in the pond in in the back in the backyard. And, uh, it was very, it was very heavy to me. Uh, I remember, I think my mom telling me that, uh, the woman just, the mother just kept saying over and over, like, I only left her for a couple of minutes, a couple of minutes. That's it. I wasn't even gone for very long. And, and she just kept saying it over and over and over. And it, it really just hit me. And I wrote the song about that. Wow, that's yeah. I can't Dude, even I imagine. Appreciate what, the insight. Like, wow. You know the feeling, <laughs> and I guess like it was pretty like empathetic of you to kind of be able to um channel that and and write that song because I'm sure a lot of people, I, I guess you know, have really gone through it and and relate to that song in one form or another. You know, totally. probably more yeah. metaphorically. <clears throat> sure sure yeah at losing anybody you know because of neglect because of a of a of a neglectful moment you know <clears throat> yeah it's crazy oh, so i guess um obviously you've had you've had all these projects like like we've talked about and um each of them have probably meant so much to different people to the like to the point where I'm sure you've heard the words like, you know, your album saved my life plenty and plenty of times. How do you like as an artist, how do you internalize that? Is that something that you just kind of like really feel or, or you just kind of like, man, I wrote these songs when I was like 19 <laughs> like, you know, like, <laughs> like, is it like the biggest mindfuck ever or what? It's inspiring. It's a trip. You're right. You d you definitely have that feeling sometimes like, wow, I, you know, wrote that song fucking high off my ass and mm -hmm. you know, blah, blah, or whatever, you know what I mean? Or, or, um, how, how could this party album, uh, help you, you know, save your life? But, and you, yeah, you start to kind of question the validity did this person really say that because they want a reaction out of me or, or did, or was it really, you know, and it sucks that you kind of go to that too, the more you hear it. But, uh, I don't know. I think people just get nervous and they say stuff. Um, and then I get, I think, I also think people are super genuine about it. Like I was gonna, you know, end it or I, you know, was in this horrible spot and you brought me out of it and those those people they 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 make you keep going because yeah. i've tried to quit music many times um trust me like i my career isn't the most successful you know what i mean i might be infamous but <laughs> you know it's so weird to look up like my fucking net worth cuz it's like in the millions but mm -hmm. i am not a millionaire you're not seeing that at all yeah no. I, oh, absolutely not. Like, I'm, you know. But, I'm, I'm, hey, people, let's get them. Let's get them up there, man. Let's just fucking <laughs> stream his shit, buy buy his shit directly. Definitely. You know, like, get them sure. get them to blow up on TikTok. Do a sad TikTok dance. <laughs> All of it, bro. Sad steps that long I, up. You know, I'm, I'm telling you, man. I'm not saying that, you know, to to incite, you know, something. No, no, I know, man. Yeah. But it's the truth. Like, but no, yeah, we're gonna give you that Millie. <laughs> <laughs> if I could, uh, man, I would, because your music has, you know, meant the world to me, and and seeing like how how it means the world to like so many people, you know, like we have like, especially like the 
you know, the DGD, like, Facebook group is kind of like a close-knit family, and obviously we yeah. Yeah. hold you to the highest <laughs> regard, and not not just for those I'm albums. thankful for that shit. Holy fuck, dude. Like, yeah. And and uh, like I said, not just for those albums, but every you know everything like yeah. the solo stuff, yeah, like even something as like short lived as a uh, eternity forever, like that was like such a wow moment for for like people. So man, we're we're really yeah, glad that that you keep going. That project will happen someday again. I I I feel like it will, but um. Yeah, right now it's just like, well, that was a cool four song thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, you know, that's the weird thing about music is it's just so unpredictable sometimes, and it's I that's what's sometimes cool. Sometimes the greatest it. things are short lived too, like you know. So, but obviously, we're great. all hoping that that we can hear something along those lines again, because like honestly, that shit like blew me away for sure oh yeah that's that was awesome you know what's cool is uh i i learned a lot from that uh from, experience or from song yeah from that experience and i think uh i think ben rosette uh did as well um mm-hmm. i think he really was like whoa this is kind of the g- we this is the genre right here like this is what people want to hear he and built so- a record label off of that sound <laughs> like Straight up, off of this kind of, I don't know, uh, neo soul Al Green math rock sound. Yeah, you yeah. Know? <clears throat> and um, and and so I, I've kind of taken my my cool bag of tricks that I did in on those four songs, and I've sprinkled it on you know Royal Coda and my new solo stuff and. You know, uh, uh, I feel like when you get such a response from your audience uh, in regards to a, a sound, then you go, oh, okay. Like whether it whether it be intentional or not, you kind of just go, all right, well, I'm going to try that kind of style uh, on this or that. And so, mm-hmm. yeah, so you – just like when you know with Ben's solo stuff and I would even say Strawberry Girls a little bit, you can hear those elements of Eternity Forever. And the same thing with the way I sing now. Uh, and Becoming the memory, like I get those Eternity yeah. Forever vibes for sure. And the new Royal Coda has even like you know there's three or four songs that are yes. that yes. kind of, <laughs> that kind of sound because it went so well and 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 fuck like uh do it <laughs> you gotta do it again we we create for ourselves but we also create you know we feed off of uh off of our audience you know yeah. we feed off of that oh that's what they fucking like all right cool i can do that you know what i'm saying so um there's a lot of like you know fast catchy things on the new royal coda record which i'm really happy about um very rhythmic and uh makes things interesting so but sure, uh, trying, you know like, not to overdo it right yeah <clears throat> we've definitely kept you for a long time uh, i'm gonna toss it back to cash do you <laughs> do you have any more right. questions before we let him go <laughs> oh yeah i got i got a few more um so I, I like i said earlier we've been talking about uh happiness and so i was wondering uh-huh. is there anything we should look for on that album that like maybe we won't see obviously or like something that you think gets overlooked on that album that that's for a people, fucking I guess? great question man wow <laughs> um something like like hidden like a like a gem or a an easter egg i guess yeah something like that <laughs> or like just something that you maybe like you like about it that maybe people don't talk about as much as you'd like or sure um you know I, that record is is so weird to me because of, of a lot of reasons but uh i don't know i don't think anything is overlooked but i would say that uh the lyrics in Carl Barker are 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 probably some of the 
the most heartfelt lyrics I've had. And, um, you know, the, the person that I'm talking about in that song, uh, that was a real thing. She you definitely feel it, man. Like, I, oh, I know yeah. I feel it. You yeah. always say we'd win the lottery someday. Fuck. Like, yeah. So I wouldn't, <laughs> so I wouldn't have to leave her. Yeah. Yeah. My job, my job is to go out and play music and, um, and it's so funny. It was, it was never about that. You know what I mean? Like, it was never about, oh, I gotta, I gotta make this money. So see you later. You know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I would say that 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 rec- that song for sure. It, you know, some some of the the best lyrics that I've I've written are the most genuine. Um, and uh, yeah, it's. It's really cool that that record's such a, you know, fan favorite for sure. Yeah, it's such a cool classic. <laughs> I mean, uh, it feels I like really, that album like influenced a lot of music since then. So definitely hang your hat on that. I feel like the success of DGD at that point, um, we we weren't doing it nearly as good as as they're doing now, uh, and. I in the band I'm sure they kind of felt like well maybe this singer was like like not the best idea you know maybe we should try another guy um and uh and it's just so weird that uh that that (laughs) that happiness is like such a a highly regarded record it's kind of a mind fuck for even me dude um because you know, <clears throat> I I have a lot of good memories, but I have a, also a lot of not good memories, you know, of of that time. And so, you don't get to choose. Uh. <laughs> yeah, I would I would chalk it up to like it was ahead of its time, you know, like totally. oh, middle core sure. started rolling in, and like that. I guess that's what kind of caught the attention of the scene, and even bands like like Thursday were trying something different, you know, like yeah. Yeah. and like. You know, the album that came out around that time was kind of, like, didn't get the best reviews and things, so. Yeah. Yeah, I fucking love Thursday. Thursday. Yeah, that full collapse album. Holy shit. Dude, I saw them, I saw them, because I'm a little older, I'm 33, and I got to see them, uh, they headlined for, with, uh, they toured with Thrice, and Coheed and Cambria opened. Damn. And it was... It was Full Collapse and Artists in the Ambulance were, like, the albums that were being promoted. Like, isn't uh, that sick? Like, <laughs> that's so incredible. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, do well, you guys uh, have any more questions? Yeah, I was yeah. going to ask uh, uh, Arico, ahead, David, guys. if you like. Oh, oh wait, okay, I was going to... Go ahead, guys. <laughs> All right, I was going to ask... Uh, is there a song from Happiness or any of your discography that you feel the most proud of? Ooh, uh, the most proud of. Uh, I, I would say just the newest stuff that I have. Um, I mean, I does does unreleased music count? <laughs> of course, yeah. Of course. I mean, it gives us something to look. Just makes me to. want to listen to it more now. <laughs> this new and Royal then, Coda shit is is fire. It's it's really <laughs> good. Um, we're really happy with it. Uh, Stefan uh, Gosh is on the bass. He mm-hmm. he mm-hmm. he entered the band right after. Uh, Jason left or. Yeah, yeah, right right when Compassion came out. Okay. That's when we gained uh Stefan Gosh and uh he is he's amazing. <clears throat> so and, can can you give us maybe a, a song title to look forward to since you feel like this is like the, the <laughs> some of your best stuff? They are all uh tentative names. Okay. So I mean you know what I've been really doing lately is uh, kind of steer clearing, uh, steering away from uh, the super long poetic names that have nothing to do with the actual song. 
And uh, that's a thing really, of the yeah. past, man. <laughs> yeah, I get it. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> we love it though we love it but yeah oh yeah i need a but but i'm kind of going... from community or something like a quote <laughs> right <laughs> yeah just i think those are really cool but also in this day and age you kind of want uh the most memorable line to uh stick in somebody's head and then search it you know what i mean that so makes sense. yeah if your song is, I love Oso Oso so much, but their song, uh, it's like G B dash O L dash H N dash N F, and it's basically goodbye old love, hello new friends, which is an incredible song. But they should have just fucking named the song Goodbye Old Love or something like that. You know what I mean? Because it's a pain in the ass. It's so I mean, hard to look it up or find it or you know what I mean? Like you were struggling to say it, so especially yeah. with with uh, platforms like like TikTok where you hear like a clip of a song, you know that that lyric is gonna is gonna be what catches you, and if if that like. Like let's take a Fall Out Boy for an example. If um, if, if the lyric was like I wouldn't any of their songs, yeah, I wouldn't piss on you to like to, put you out while you're on fire you out, yeah. or whatever that line was, you wouldn't yeah. think that the name of the song is called uh, "Tell That Mick He Made My List of Things to Do Today." Like what the but fuck? That's from Rushmore. But yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> do you know Rushmore? But <laughs> yeah, Rushmore was a great movie. Um, I, I got one the- more. Yeah, go for it. All right. Uh, sorry, I, I sorry to cut you off. I mean, you can no, you're good, keep. You're good. Okay, I'll. Just... All right. Um, have you heard the uh, term scene jazz? Scene jazz? No, yeah. I have not. No. Seen okay. It. Really? It was just a meme that went viral uh, pre- pretty recently, like within like the dance Gavin dance fan groups. Oh, to okay. Be honest, I thought Kurt invented that. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he might have. Uh, is it i mean i've heard of swan core i mean it, it's should, basically I it's, a, uh, a play on that yeah okay play on that okay thoughts media thoughts <laughs> uh well first of all that's a complete crock of shit <clears throat> because <laughs> <laughs> because scene has nothing to do with jazz i mean i i guess it, in my opinion, if you're going to say scene, I guess there's a jazz scene. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's true. There is there is a community of people that love jazz, and they go to their jazz club, at, you know, or they did. And, mm. um, and that's the jazz scene. But scene jazz. <laughs> <laughs> it's like jazz for scene kids. Yeah. So, <laughs> so you're talking about math rock, basically. Basically, yeah. Basically. <laughs> but but I would say like a diet math rock with a singer. That's true. Very diet. That's, that would be scene jazz. Yeah. Which, See, Kurt, you forgot to preface that with pushing up your glasses and saying, "Well, oh, actually, <laughs> scene jazz, scene jazz is a trash name, guys." <laughs> like, it's horrible. No. <laughs> so if there was like a like a a jazz band that was like a math rock band, would they be like scene jazz scene? <laughs> I mean, yeah. the people that appreciated that music would be the scene jazz scene, right? Yeah, <laughs> not the actual band. Or I guess they, the- they would be a part of the scene jazz scene. Yeah. The, the, we're getting down to the science here. You know, we're talking about the real stuff here. This. <laughs> Cutting down to the core. Semantics. I totally get the term. Because, you know, the kind of dance Gavin Dancy sounding music is... Uh, I would say that Thomas Arak made scene jazz before scene jazz. Fair. Oh, for sure. See, that makes yeah, sense. When, when y'all brought up the long title names, I was like, this just reminds me of... a. Uh, S oh F C P S I T S G E P G E P G E P. Yeah. Like, okay, but do you actually no know what that, that stands for? <laughs> no, I don't. 
Okay, I I actually do, but I'm not gonna say it on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, everybody well, should be having uh, protected sex, especially uh, you know, during this time. <laughs> um, but yeah, are you talking uh, about FTP remix? Yes. Yeah, the, the original. No, yeah, the original one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, F- the FCP remix is fine, you know. <laughs> but uh, uh Kurt, Could have been uh, sorry, I meant uh, Cash's last question was uh, similar to mine, but uh, no, <laughs> not another dark one. But uh, so in terms of like happiness or DGD, like you know, you've brought in some DGD tracks into your own solo sets, namely uh, yeah. you know, Uneasy Heart, Switcher Two, and I believe. You added hot water on wool, which I was just, uh, <laughs> dude. That like, if you could add another one, uh, what's another track you might revive from your DGD days and a live set, maybe? Oh shit. Um, just you one know, more. I don't know. I, so I never, I would never do the whole thing of hot water on wool. Uh, um, I, I just did the beginning. It was so okay. So we went out on a tour, and I did a medley of mm-hmm. three dgd songs at the end as an encore mm-hmm. because really you know that's you got to give them what they want you know what i mean and so uh and i gotta spice it up for me because i don't want to <laughs> just sing the same things over and over so what i did was is i think i started with hot water on wool went into uh i think strawberry switcher part two and then ended it with uneasy hearts way the most and people just they loved it they fucking loved it obviously yeah, like, that, that reminds me of uh <laughs> of when you went live on on ig and like you at one point you just looked at like you know the camera on your phone and you're like oh yeah i'm gonna play uneasy hearts it's coming <laughs> <laughs> and i get it man i get it like yeah. let's hear something different you know <laughs> I, it's, I will say it's the musician's oh, curse. It, it's just <laughs> musician's curse like you know the most successful song that you have you probably don't like it by now because you've had to play it so many goddamn times but yeah, look, radiohead it, straight up stop oh, yeah. playing creep talk york <laughs> i mean and you know that's that's not uh that's not uh unheard of like david bowie you know, he retired a whole album. So, uh, <laughs> is we were it, just talking about him last week. You, you yes, almost smart even. To do? I don't think it's smart to do. I, I don't think it's smart at all to do. No matter how much you hate singing that song, you should do it because fuck, Not about I'm, it. like money. You should, it's yours. Where it's would yours. you be without it? People love that song. They are not gonna yeah. get tired of it just because you're tired of it. You know, but you can make it seldom, which is which that's what I kind of like to do is, uh, you know, I don't do a solo tour and then end with a DGD medley every tour. That was just that one. I think you actually where I saw you on, you actually ended your set like you did play you played Starberry Swisher 2 and then you did Eternity Forever Fantasy, which was mind blowing, dude. Like the full beans, man. You guys killed it. (laughs) <laughs> yeah that was probably with televangelist and those guys are really good musicians and they were able to pull that song off and do it justice so yeah it's, it's really cool when when you're able to uh collaborate with such awesome musicians and i'm yeah. i miss a lot of those guys shout out to televangelist uh we need to go on another european tour soon <laughs> That'd be fun. Yeah, and if anybody hasn't heard them, you know, check them out. Check Body Thief Perfect. out. Like, you put a lot of band, bands on, you know, for Dude, sure. Like, I am so excited for Body Thief. We should have had a whole Body Thief <laughs> section. Um, there's so much <laughs> awesome shit happening with that band. Um, we just can't wait to, you know, uh, get that stuff out. And oh, we'll uh, get them on the podcast for sure. You should. You definitely should. They're a great bunch of guys. They're they're very very smart and uh, respectful dudes. And I'm just super happy to be able to represent them. 
because they're talented and they're just really nice dudes. So yeah, it's it's a uh, it's it's a joy to be a part of what they're doing. Um, they remind me a lot of a lot like birds. Uh, just their spoken word poetry um, that they incorporate in their songs very well. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like they do it even better than than ALL. <laughs> 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 and man, which we we really didn't get to touch on that too. But man, like we've kept you for like two and a half hours now, and we're <laughs> we're we got to let you go. But we're so appreciative. You don't even know, man. Like, Thank you. From the bottom. Like I'd seriously, dude. Back, oh, this, this is great. Yeah. Dude, I'd yes, please. If you ever want to come back, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Anytime. And I will put it out there. We're like you and me. We're best friends now. So I'm gonna be hitting you up. <laughs> the DMs every now and then. Fuck yeah, man. Oh, okay. Yeah, definitely, dude. If you ever want to, just like you need a guest seat, you can join us on the show anytime. Sweet. <laughs> plug yeah. whatever you want, man. Yeah. I'm you want to plug something? Yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm starting my own podcast pretty soon. I haven't told anybody oh. yet. Oh, yeah. what? Exclusive. Me and, friend, here. Here. <laughs> me and my friend Dominic. Uh, yeah. So maybe Dude, we'll tune we'll in. Have to do something. Yeah, we'll do a a big huge podcast with everybody on it. That would be <laughs> yeah. that would be very cool. And speaking of things that you're doing, did you just uh open up a skate shop? Are you working on opening one up? It's not a skateboard shop, but. Okay. We do. We. I mean, we live in California. We love that culture. Um, it's pretty much just a uh, a facility to uh, manufacture tapes, uh, cassette oh, wow. tapes. Yeah. We do a lot of that. Uh, we also uh, are getting into vinyl. We're going to be doing lathe cutting. Uh, so it's a, it's a little different than vinyl pressing. Uh, okay. It's actually a better sounding vinyl. Um, yeah, dude, plug that plug plug that away. Like, what's it called, yeah. and, and how can people get in contact well, with you for that? It's super new right now, but uh, the company is called Big Wave Industries, okay. and it's basically a merch company. We're gonna be selling all mediums of audio. We're gonna be doing T-shirts, you know, hats, fucking everything. Really, we we want to do it all. We want to do shoes. We might need to hit you up. <laughs> For yeah. demo team podcast jerseys. Yes. <laughs> yeah, dude. I would okay, I'm to. down with that. Yeah. I'm down. We're gonna put our <laughs> episodes on cassette. And oh, that. <laughs> that too. That too, guys. If you guys have a podcast that you want to put on a on a tape, obviously this you might episode. have to cut it in half or something. Yeah. You know. Yeah. But you can fit a half an hour on on each side or whatever. It might have to be a double cassette. <laughs> yeah. but but honestly from the bottom yeah. of our hearts thank you so much and you know thank you for like your contribution to music man it it literally means the world to a lot of us and i, know I don't think we'd I be here without lot. you yeah yeah definitely <laughs> i really appreciate that and uh yeah it's uh it's it's been a joy to uh to play music and to you know have all these people uh appreciate it it's uh it's truly a blessing so i appreciate Definitely, it dude. Kurt, yeah Kurt, you're you remind just like me of a guy like me and it makes me want to sing man keep doing it <laughs> rock on <laughs> you don't have to have a good voice you don't you you just have to have heart and you have to have you know be creative with it that's all you need to do definitely um, so yeah I like you're facts yes sir hell, hell yeah hell yeah <laughs> You're like a huge influence on me, my band, like my singer in my band. She's a huge fan of yours. And just like, thank you so much, dude, like for everything you do. Well, thank you. Yeah. Appreciate that, guys. All right, man. Take care and enjoy right. the rest of your day. Yeah. Peace, guys. Later, Peace. man. Peace. Hope we All weren't right. too nervous. Have a good day. <laughs> 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 All right, bye. <laughs>